how's it going? So my next thing that I did after I spoke at the African American Youth Leadership Conference the other week ago was actually um, they wanted me to talk about how I build curriculums and how I approach teaching STEM to uh, minority students, particularly those that just don't have an interest or don't think that they have an interest in, in the in the sciences. And for me, it's it's all about creating that reference point that is culturally relevant for them. And so with my work, I've always tried to hone in on projects that I could create that people are willing to pay money for, and then taking those projects, opening up the hood. And when you open up the hood, you're able to show them the, the different things that they may be interested in, right? And so if you have a if you have a black kid that loves anime, you know, then they might be interested in in drawing and art and all those things. And those can, those are very technical. You know, you can you can learn the skills, you can learn the tools, you can approach a methodology to it and you can build a career for yourself. You know, it's very much like engineering, you know, to the point where even if you don't know how to draw, you could develop the software that people can use to draw. And so using the arts as a as a vehicle to instantiate all these technical and scientific you know skills is is it's valuable and i think people don't necessarily approach it that way but you know they can and so i use my work as an example and i use that to educate people and so the more work i'm able to create the cooler it looks the more appealing it will be for future students to get into xr and so at the end of the day it's like i make cool stuff so that i can encourage black people to get into the space and when they get into the space, it makes things better. And we see that time and time again. So why should XR, AR, MR, VR be any different? And so check it out. Let me know what you think. How, how's, how's everybody doing today? Doing good? Doing fine? Doing perfect? Good. Good. Yeah, and so I'm doing pretty good. So what do, when you think of STEM, like what do you, what do you ultimately think of with STEM, right? Like often with STEM, what like what are the things that sort of come to mind? Uh, science for me. Science, okay. So we got science. What uh, what other stuff? We got computers. We got programming. Engineering. Engineering, okay. Um, anything else? So we got the S. Mm, we got. Sort of mathematics we got math okay there we go we got the m i feel like people when somebody mentions stem they mention the s and the t R. and the e but they never mention the m <laughs> and uh and if you talk to people they'll say that the m stands for math sometimes and then other times people will say that the m stands for man manufacturing and so it, de it depends on who you talk to that m is sort of up in the air and uh do you, do you feel how do i how do i feel about steam hmm. very very i'm glad you asked that because uh so for me uh and I, I guess i'll get to that right but uh so for me the when i approach stem right we're talking about science technology engineering and math um not manufacturing but math um I approach it from, I, I look back at my experiences as an athlete and my experiences as a young person that was introduced to that early on. And ultimately I went to the athletics because I felt like there was more of an opportunity there for me. And, and I think that my, that is really, imp I think it's informed my approach as a, as a STEM educator, because the, it wasn't the. I think that athletics has has a very technical component to it to be successful. And I think that that's the same sort of ideas that go around that technical component for athletics are easily translated to any other area. And in many ways, like there's a lot of overlap, right? Uh, in both areas, you're educating, you're, you're showing people opportunities, and you're showing that the applications of your time and effort in these areas uh, yield you results. The difference is that when we're looking at STEM, 
it's often like, okay, let's learn these skills and then try to get a job in those areas. Whereas with athletics, there's a level of agency of if you are good, you will, you will be successful and you don't, people don't know what it will be. You know, the journey is seeing where, it, where the athletics takes you opposed to with a, with STEM, where it's not often, where does the STEM take you? It's more of what there's a, there's a market that's available and it's underrepresented and let's get more people the skills so that they can fill the needs of the market. And, uh, and that doesn't really give, there's not a lot of creativity that, that can be incorporated into that. Um, albeit, you know, there's, I think there's more clear pathways when you're sort of pursuing PhDs and, and going into academia and going into the field of medicine, because you become a doctor, you know, like that's a clear thing, right? Uh, but when it comes to other areas of STEM, uh, people often don't necessarily know what, you know, don't know all the things that you can do. And so, uh, uh, <laughs> and so from, <laughs> So when, um, so when you're talking, like when I started approaching this as an educator, the big thing I started thinking about was what made me attracted to, to athletics versus being attracted to, to, um, to STEM in general, like the science and the engineering and all that stuff. And ultimately when I finished playing the stuff that like really sort of, you know, helped me was the, was the STEM. And, and so I ended up falling back onto that anyway. And so I started thinking, hmm, if I would have just pursued that initially, I probably could have saved myself from having two hip surgeries and probably saved myself from, you know, having arthritis and all these different things because uh, the over-reliance on my body, uh, you know, has a consequence and the under-reliance on my mind, I sort of have to make up now. And so I, I say all this stuff to say, like, my approach now is creating cool things and under teaching people that those cool things are a byproduct of STEM. And the things that you see is the A in, in STEAM. And so in many ways, the, the, my approach to STEM is the STEAM. And if I, if I, and if I could, and if I could sort of talk, if I could show the, I guess the, the way people, experience that is that they initially experience the art and then once they experience the art it gives them a reference point for to lay the groundwork for introducing the the s the t and the m and in many ways the uh if we we're to say like m can be you know manufacturing and math you know the m will often be the last one because the last one is the way that you know P, you're able to push that creativity forward, right? And so, like, the A is essentially that, that sort of raw creativity that lives in our minds and lives out in the world and stuff, and we have to harness it. And, you, and we use the, the STEM to, to harness that, and then we share it out into the world uh, as sort of a tangible product that people can reference. And so, um, and so with that, I'm actually going to show what that actually looks like because the beauty of the beauty of my work as a creator is that I do a lot of things are, that are I guess customer facing which is like what they say in the industry is like if people see it in the general population then uh, then they're considered customers even if they're not buying it and uh, and so there's a there's a level of polish and allure that that comes with uh, sort of the creativity and the output and so when people see my stuff they're not looking at they're not looking at raw code. They're looking at the manifestation of that. And then that manifestation becomes attractive, much like, you know, you watch a bowl game and a kid says, OK, I want to do that. And so then they'll they'll go to the field, they'll talk to people and they'll they'll learn the skills that makes them able to do that thing. Um, and so my approach is really that where this is this is my highlight reel. And then I'm able to, after they see the highlight reel, you could say, okay, I want to learn how to do that. And then it opens up the landscape for people to, to learn those very specific things to create that. And as you take those very specific steps, then you gain the skills that are required to participate in that industry. And at the end of the day, you make something cool and you're in STEM.
right? Like it, it's it, it sort of it falls into it falls into a it falls into things organically, and so uh, and so often when people when I talk about animation and STEM and and STEAM and all that, I uh, I like to show them you know I just like to show them things that they would often just see in the wild. And so, uh, and so here is a, can everybody see, actually, let me see if I could, uh, make sure I'm sharing the screen and the, uh, and the sound first. Yep. Yep. We could see it, Steve. Okay, cool. So, uh, so here is, um, here's a project that I just finished. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a web comic that I'm working on and, uh, it explores animation and sort of like the black identity. And because of last year, right? Like the, the question that I wanted to ex uh, the question that I was addressing is, with everything that's happening with, you know, police brutality and all that stuff, what if a, what if a black kid had agency in that situation? And so uh, we know the we know the negative consequences of those interactions. Uh, but what if there was a sort of an adventure story anime inspired version of it where uh, a black kid had agency? And so that's sort of the raw idea, right? Raw idea come from the mind. This is what I want to create. Um, and so the expression of that is this. So that is that is what people will see right they see the they see the lights they see the action they see the camera movements all those different things right it's art this is this is like okay i want to play around with that if it's a video game maybe i'll check it out cool capture people that is the byproduct of of the steam and so now when people you'll have a you'll have a certain population that will say okay i want to see that that's cool and then you'll have another population that sparks their interest of like, oh, that's something that I wanted to create. That's something that I wanted to explore. Oh, how was that made? Oh, you could do, I could learn how to do that? Cool. So then you, you garner people's attention and you have a reference point for, for people. And, and so very much like, you know, I could be an athlete, I could be a doctor, uh, I could be an animator, I could, I could explore creativity, and I could use science to do that. And so then... Like what a, a lot of my work lends to do is, is everyone able to see this video? Yeah. Okay. So then what my work lend, uh, allows me to do is say, okay, the the day-to-day -day stuff that I need to do to, to actually create things, um, I can say, you see this, you see this scene, you see this visual, you see this animation. Now I can open up the hood and I can say, okay, these are the things that, these are the skills that are required to do that. And it lays out a pathway for people to follow, so that they could, um, so that they could do these same things. Probably not the, this exact thing, but it's a, it's, um, you know, it's it's comparable to something in the in that particular industry. And so this is a uh, this is sort of the the behind the hood of it for uh, one of the scenes. <laughs>
Yo, yo. And so then it allows me, oops, oops, oops. And so it allows me the opportunity to not only create this, but then I could say, okay, this is a reference point for these are the things that are required to, to make something like this. And not only that, understanding the software, right? Like, because what people see is sort of this finished product. Let me see if I can find it. Uh-oh, 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 I lost it. Cancel, go back. Yo, yo. Yeah, so what people see is this, but then when they're interested in it, they are able, I'm able to show them this which is, this is, this is what I see. You know, I see colors, I see uh, timelines, and I, and I have an understanding of how these things work and how, how physics works. So in any particular situation, if you, if you understand physics, you know, you understand that uh, the way we perceive things is, uh, is, you know, there's a cap on frame rate. And so if you sort of play pictures in sequence, it'll give you the illusion of motion and so that illusion of motion provides for the for the opportunities for animation. And then from there, you understand that in order to make something believable, even if it is drawn, uh, understanding just principles of physics and how gravity works, if somebody jumps in the air, you know, and they land on the ground, the process from the air to the ground, you have this illusion of, of stretching. And then when you land, you have this sort of squashing effect. And so when somebody lands on the ground, you actually have sort of a squash going towards the ground and then it bellies back up. And then from there, understanding just pacing and timing of frame rates and, and how if you change the frame rate, it changes the pace of, of the motions. And then when it comes to, you know, and I like to show this uh, when we're going into Unity, which is just a, a madness of a piece of software, right? Like when we're looking at Unity, right? Like this is all 3D development. So this is coding. This is uh, modeling. This is designing. This is these are all the technical aspects of it. So people see the people see the art, but behind the hood is all the code is all the is all the is all the STEM stuff that is harnessing that creativity. And so with all of these things right here, these are all technical components that once you have the skills and you learn the skills using the software, you, you become more adept at know, at knowing how to code, knowing how to design, knowing how to uh, think about things and innovate, knowing how to, um, you know, just just do a, just to do a variety of things. At, at face value, this looks like madness, like this looks crazy. But um, you know, so does so does you know a a large script of code when you first look at it. But having the opportunity to play around with these things and then and then giving people a reference point to, you know, when you see when you see the end result. And then, and then you see what it's made of. Then there's a pathway that you can start with uh, by learning the software and learning all learning all these technical skills. Because uh, I think uh, this program is a program called Unity. And so, if you're familiar with like game development or like AR stuff, Unity is sort of one of those unique softwares that, if you know it, you can make six figures just knowing how to use the software to create stuff with. And so. Uh, Understanding the software is one thing. Understanding all these things is, is great, but really having that reference point of, you know, for me as a creator, I like creating cool stuff that has that and integrating technology to to further that creativity. And so if you're able to further that creativity, then one, you're able to reach a broader audience with it. And from that broader audience, you're able to have impacts that, you know, you often just didn't see yourself having uh, because of having access to things. And so um, and so with it, you know, at the end of it, you start off with a blank canvas, you start off with these ideas and, and that is sort of the manifestation of your creativity. And then the and then harnessing that creativity through STEM is uh, is what gets you that end result and more opportunities. And then you just rinse and repeat at that. Is a character based off of me? Um, so the character is based off of if I did not go if I did not have my father in my life and I didn't instantly, if I didn't go to, uh, if I didn't play sports, you know, so like, where would I be if I didn't play sports? Um, and I didn't have that structure in place. And so that is sort of like the idea, the, the manifestation of, uh, 
this is sort of a manifestation of the just that idea that I had in my mind. And uh, and you just kind of go from there, right? Like it, it's a you get the opportunity to just like create and share things uh, with that with that uh, with that background of, of science and technology and engineering and math and manufacturing uh, behind your belt. And so um, and so with that, does anyone have any questions? Yo, 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 this is Steve from Stuck on an Island. I definitely appreciate you taking the time to check out my work. Follow me on all the social nets. Be sure to check out my studio, Iltopia, on all the other platforms. And if you want to get some merch, check out shop.iltopia.com. <laughs>